We all want more website traffic. So whether you're a blogger, e-commerce store owner, local business, agency, it really doesn't matter. Traffic is king. But to increase your website traffic, there's a lot. There's keyword research, content creation, on-page SEO, link building, and a lot of details you need to get right. So in this video, I'm gonna cover my top traffic generation strategies to increase your traffic. And if you make it to the end, I'll give you the exact framework I use to get my blog to over 500,000 monthly readers every single month. But before we get started, I wanna invite you to watch my free masterclass. It goes over how I make over $300,000 a month with my online business, make sure to click the link and sign up below. And let's get into the topic for today. So first, when we talk about increasing website traffic, we have to realize that one, we need a website. And two, we need to know every stage in this process of creating articles, getting them to rank, getting them to get traffic, right? So first, the number one on this list is creating a content assembly line. So we could publish one article a month, we could publish one article a year, that's not going to get us much traffic. So first, we have to think about what is our actual process? What is our structure like when we're creating this website and creating articles to get traffic to? So that includes creating what I call a content assembly line. So rather than being a tortured writer, and writing everything yourself and you know perfecting every article making it 2000 3000 words making it perfect and publishing we need to realize that not every article will rank. It's just simple data, really, and how Google works. Not every article is going to rank, but some of them will. So we need a process for all of this, which I call the content assembly line. So that starts with Number one, creating what I call an MVP or a minimum viable post. So if you go to my blog, you can see a lot of them start with like the seven best type of software. That's because I don't want to start with the 21 best because it doesn't make sense to spend my time on all of those. But, you know, start with a minimum viable post. And then what we're doing is we're using a tool like Surfer SEO to optimize this first for search engines. And then we'll deal with human beings later. So with Surfer SEO, you're really using semantic keywords. So you're doing things like having a content score, putting the right keywords in the right places. So here's an example of one for like how to choose HR software. And we're writing this, we wanna create it in a minimum viable way with a good SEO score first, using the right keywords in the right places. So semantic keywords help you increase your website traffic because it tells Google and search engines, this is a quality article. An article on HR software, you know, there's all kinds of different words you might need in there. Ha human capital management, applicant tracking system. HR software provider, employee development. Google's smart. This AI and machine learning scans your article and to increase website traffic, it needs to know that it's actually good based on semantically related keywords and being a robust, good article. We create the article first with Surfer SEO for search engines. We publish the article. We see the initial rankings. It might start on page four or page eight and get no traffic, but we need to like hone in on this over time. Then we look at the rankings and data, then we can update it if we need to. You know, every three to six months, update an article potentially, or more frequently if it's on page two and it just needs some tweaks. And then, you know, maybe it needs links to the article. So that we'll get to that later. But you continue to climb the rankings, and it's kind of like it's like gardening. You know, you can get an initial good ranking and get traffic, but over time, if you never update that article, it's going to keep going down slightly. So each article is like a garden. If you don't water it, it'll wither away and die. So you need a, a process, an assembly line process, where you start with keyword research, you move it to optimizing the simple first version of this article for search engines, publish it, see if it's working, hone it in over time, and then focus your updates on the most important things that can get you traffic and make you money. Real quick, I wanna give you a word from our sponsor, something that's really helpful, and that is Surfer SEO's content editor. So Surfer SEO's content editor does four things. First, it gives you an SEO content score. Two, it integrates with Google Docs, Jasper.ai, and Pixabay. Three, it also builds content outlines for assembly. And finally, it generates dozens of ideas for heading structures for articles in under one minute. So with Surfer SEO's content score, it actually makes writing pretty fun. The content score helps you assemble your content the right way with the right words in the right places. It also tells you exactly how to get ranking on page one by telling you, you know, how long the article needs to be, how many paragraphs and headings you need, the number of images you need to place on the page, and the keywords you need, and the number of times you need to include them. So this is all great for ranking on Google. Use it today to climb into the green and reach number one for your primary keywords. Surfer SEO's Chrome extension integrates with Google Docs, Jasper.ai, and Pixabay and brings the most important and powerful tools together to make your writing life easier. So with one backslash in Surfer SEO, you can bring in a relevant image from Pixabay's free image library to move your dial to green faster. Try Surfer SEO's Pixabay integration today to speed up your writing content process. And as a content assembler, you need to start with an outline. So with Outline Builder, you'll know exactly what needs to be written to rank in Google on the number one spot. So use the Outline Builder when you're assembling your next piece of content to have the highest probability of being the number one result on Google for your primary keyword. Number two to increase website traffic is we have to talk about keyword research and we have to talk about doing it the right way. So there's unlimited things 
things we could write about with a blog to get traffic to. You know, whether you're an agency, a local business, a blogger, we have to know and understand keyword research because to rank on Google for stuff and get traffic, we need to actually know how this works. So when we're talking about specifically getting a lot of traffic, there's different types of posts that you need to write on your website. So first is how to, so that's informational content. Basically the, the internet's full of information. So we're writing how to articles. We're also writing transactional articles if we want to make affiliate revenue. So best articles like best, you know, and in any niche, this works best credit cards, best laptops, best gaming laptops, anything. So we have to kind of bucket these keywords to start knowing what we can actually rank for and understanding this deeply if we want to actually rank. So I'm going to put in something like ideas because ideas, the internet's full of ideas. Ideas posts and ideas articles are things that people initially kind of search for when they're at the top of the funnel. So if somebody's thinking about, you know, they want to buy a couch. They might look up like living room ideas first, and then they start might getting ideas about couches and which ones they want. Is it a modular sectional? Is it a love seat? Whatever it is. Then they know the brands and they can hone in on it. But the internet starts with a lot of ideas. So if we use a tool like Ahrefs and we look at matching terms, we can see there's all kinds of really high volume searches. Like if we want to increase website traffic, we want to rank for ideas posts because that's where a ton of search volume is. So things like dinner ideas, tattoo ideas, drawing ideas, gender reveal ideas, low competition, healthy dinner ideas. You can find this in your niche. So like you can do living room ideas and just see what comes up if you're in the kitchen niche, living room, small. So there's small living room, modern living room, gray living room, farmhouse living room, wall decor, so many different potential low competition keywords you can rank for. Or you just put in like kitchen ideas. You can start ranking for these. Small kitchen, kitchen remodel ideas, design, decor, island, all kinds of different things with ideas. There's business ideas, you know, um, finance ideas, all of these different ideas types of posts. So these are like, you have to, in your niche, basically, if you want to get a lot of traffic, you have to find these high, you know, top of funnel informational posts. So if you're in, you know, fitness, this might not be ideas, but it might be workouts. So you put in, you know, workouts, and then you can put the keyword difficulty under 20. So find things that you can actually rank for. And you can see chest workout with dumbbells, low difficulty, high search volume, perfect one to write about to get ad revenue, get a ton of traffic and find things that you can easily rank for. High volume, low competition equals increasing website traffic. There's other articles too you want to rank for. So like something like best uh, products to make affiliate commissions on. So we can find these in any niche too. Best golf brings up a lot of easy ones. You think about getting traffic in the golf niche, and then there's all these different potential low competition ideas. Golf balls, shoes, bags, irons, drivers, clubs, range finders, grips, everything that you can rank for under the sun to increase traffic. Or maybe it's like something like fishing. You want to write about fishing, your fishing blog or fishing website. You write about best fishing spots near you, best fishing kayaks, lines, rods, sunglasses, brands. There's so many opportunities out there. We just have to know what, how to find these opportunities. Or like maybe it's um, you know something like tools. So if you're writing about power tools, woodworking tools, electrician tools, garden tools. So knowing you know how to look for these things is really important, and that's first. Or you can put in your niche like how to plus running. So you can put in how to start running, how to fix a running, how to breathe while running how to get faster at running. So you just put in how to or ideas or best and you find everything you're gonna rank for to increase your website traffic. Number three on my list to increase your website traffic is to optimize your title tags to match search intent. So what I mean by that is when you look at a title and you go to a Google page, you wanna make sure that people actually click your article because click through rate can also help you rank and we wanna make sure that we're matching what people actually want. So there's the psychology behind it. So here's an example, when I Google how to lose weight, I want to take a take stock and look at what's currently ranking. So there's things like Healthline, how to lose weight fast in three simple steps. So the keyword is how to lose weight. We're looking for what other words are in there to make people click. Then we have losing weight, cdc.gov. I wouldn't really count that. I'm looking for other sites. Weight loss, six strategies for success, 24 ways to lose weight without dieting, how to lose weight fast, simple tips. I did, you know, I did studies of this and I keep going back and looking at this because it's interesting. But people, when you think about how to lose weight, what do people want? Well, they want to do it fast like right away, with little effort and in a simple way. So if I wrote an article and said, how to lose weight in six years in public embarrassingly, no one would click on that. Maybe they would, but no one would want that because we have to know the step behind it. People that want to lose weight want to do it fast and simple. So that's kind of the search intent trigger words that you would that I would add. Then I would start ranking. You would rank for how to lose weight, how to lose weight fast. You rank for all of these different variations, but you have to match the search intent. So that means the article itself, also the content within the article has to be based on that search intent. So when you're thinking about what am I going to write in an article about how to lose weight? Well, yes, you could say, you know, the old SEO way would be 
put a bunch of headings in like, what is the history of losing weight? How can you lose weight today in modern society? How, you know, adding how to lose weight a bunch of times throughout, that doesn't work. We have to give people what they want immediately. People have short attention spans. So it's really, how do I lose weight fast? Well, what's the quickest way I can do it up top? Like, what are the key interesting aha tips I can put in there to help someone lose it fast and secretly and simply. So that's matching search intent with these search intent trigger words. And this works in any niche too. Like you might see what I do in some of these like more transactional posts. So if I have something like the best website builders, you'll see I can kind of put some other stuff in here. So I have 19 best website builders, Wix, Squarespace, and more. So it's kind of interesting. It gives like everyone knows Wix, Squarespace, so it might help people click. And also we're leading with an odd number because odd numbers get more clicks. We're leading with this superlative, so best, target keyword, plus all the search intent trigger stuff, and a year if it's relevant and timely. So you can see other ones I have, like e-commerce platform, 17 plus best, ranked and reviewed. Or we have like SEO, 23 plus best SEO tools, honest reviews and free options. So there might be, people might want free options in the list. CRM software, compared and reviewed. A lot of these best ones are easy to write the titles on because it's basically number plus the keyword plus some extra words, you know. But really just think about honing in on the title tag, the H1 of your article, what it is and getting people to click. So H1s are really important for your article to get traffic. That's the heading, the title. But we also have to talk about H2s and h 3 So how do we structure the content in the article to increase traffic? This is actually more important than you think. We can't just have all paragraph text and expect things to rank. Google needs structure. They need to understand, you know, what's most important in the article. And that's where H2 and H3 headings come in. So if you look at this, the H1 here is 17 best CRM software of 2022. If we look at it, we have an introduction with internal links, a video, and then we have, this is the first H2 heading. What is the best CRM software? That's an H2 in the form of a question, which is the best way to do it. And then we have the number here, number one, Salesforce, that's an H3. H2 in the form of a question, H3 with the individual answer, and then you can obviously elaborate with all the content here, but that's what you do, and then you do it the same way every single time. Try this, number two, H3, and you go down the list, down the list, and then you can also add more H2s down the list, like what is plus your target keyword, how do you choose the best, I even added an infographic here to help the article, and this all happens over time, you don't do this overnight, like this took a lot of updates. What should you look for in, that's another H2. So really, you you know, questions to ask when choosing what are the benefits. So really in-depth stuff. And it's based on H2s in the form of the questions that you're answering in the article and H3s, which are kind of the bullets that are starting to answer the questions. Next, we have to talk about how to actually add links into your articles to increase website traffic. So we have to also have the right internal links and outbound external links in order to help rank content, improve rankings, and increase traffic. So here's my article on how to make money blogging in 2022, 203K in year one. So you can see I started out and I have a number of different internal links in the introduction. So if I wanna pass the most link value to other articles and help them rank too, and like have related content, I add them early in the article. So earlier the better when it comes to links and I have them internally. This is an internal link, internal link, internal link, internal link, internal link. So we add them early on. I have a video here, another internal link. And then we have you know affiliate links and other th links throughout. So a lot of these are internal links. I could probably even add um, a helpful statistic with an external link here. I think that would be helpful to show you're a source of trusted information. So really you wanna have a number of internal links in the intro, uh, throughout the content a little bit, and in the outro to get people to not bounce off the article. So you wanna make it as engaging as possible and treat it like kind of like chapters in a book. For example, if you Google how to start a business and you look at what's ranking number one for this, it's this sba.gov article, which isn't even an article, it's a hub page of all the content. So these are just basically internal links going to other articles. So when we think about internal link structure, it's really important to realize that like one article is just kind of a chapter in a book. How to start a business, these are the 10 steps. This is ranking number one, and then it goes to other articles. So Google understands the content around your article. It's not just understanding you know, what's on that page, but it's also what's on the related pages and internally linked stuff. So to rank, you need a lot of information in your niche. So. How can you do this? Well, add a couple internal links to yourself in the introduction. You can also have some statistics and stuff like that. So you wanna balance that where you internally link to yourself a number of times in the article and externally link with do follow links to really helpful sources of information and then make sure all of your affiliate links if you use them are no follow. The last way and potentially the most important way to increase website traffic is to build links to your website. So this is the hardest part. It's off page SEO. We talked all about on page SEO, that stuff that you can directly control with you know your content strategy, but we also have to talk about link building. So I have other videos linked here that you can look at for link building help um, on exactly how to do guest blogging, how to do link building step by step. This is a lot of outreach, a lot of LinkedIn and email and building real connections to get links because the internet's full of people and you know, links aren't just random. They're based on, you know, personal connections, 
you know, people knowing each other. Yes, sometimes you can get random statistics links and passive links. You can do that. But when you're just starting out and your DR is zero or 10, links are the most important thing to get Google to start trusting you. So you can see here, I'm looking at my Ahrefs profile, and these are all the links that are pointing to my blog, adamandfroy.com. So like Shopify, Medium, Weebly, HubSpot, Entrepreneur, Forbes, all these different sites. And how did I get these? Well, I actively worked on link building. So, you know, you're building real connections with people. You're asking for links. You're providing links in return via guest posts. It's a whole process. But if you're not getting any traffic, it's usually because you don't have links. You've written, I have a lot of people I've talked to that say, I have 50 articles, but I'm getting no traffic. Well, it's because you have no links to your website. Google can never trust you yet because when you think about the World Wide Web as a giant web, a spider web, and you just start a new blog and your domain rating is zero, you have no authority, no links, you're out here on an island by yourself, Google is going to find it kind of hard to trust you. Now, if you start getting links from other reputable sites in your niche, you can start to move your way into the circle of that web and get more and more authority. Then Google's like, oh, okay, yeah, they're getting links to their site. I can trust them now. I'm going to rank them for a bunch of stuff. And this depends on the niche. Like you can rank for stuff without any links if you want to rank for like some certain um, long tail keywords and things you can still make a little bit of money on. But the biggest challenge is like getting links and, and people are kind of scared of it because they don't want to put themselves out there. They just want to stay on the sidelines, build a website and try to increase website traffic that way. The best way to increase traffic in the long term is to build links to your site. So make sure to check out other videos on my channel related to that. So if that was interesting to you, I hope those tips helped you to increase website traffic. You know, we're talking about Google organic search here. We're not talking about, you know, random stuff like Pinterest traffic or stuff that doesn't really make you money. We're talking about the traffic generation strategies that actually make you money in the 2020s. So if you want to learn how I get, you know, 500,000 monthly readers, how I make $300,000 a month with my online business, make sure to click the link in the description below and sign up for the free 60-minute masterclass. Thousands of students had gone through it, had a lot of interesting and aha moments. I condensed all of my learning into one free training, so I hope you find it useful. Let me know what you think. How much website traffic are you getting? Do you have any questions on generating website traffic? Let me know. Uh, check out other videos on my channel on you know blogging, SEO, YouTube, online business, mindset, exactly what you need to build a business. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Please like it, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the next video.